Hi, firstly, thank you so much for taking time out to support the new work of our Rifco Associates. Now, over the past 12 months or so, Rifco Theatre Company have supported over 60 freelance artists, from actors to directors, writers to editors, and everything in between from all over the UK, and all throughout a global pandemic, when much of the art sector had come to a standstill. Rifco prides itself in supporting new voices from British South Asian backgrounds. And if you enjoy what you're about to see, then be sure to check out all the information to find out how you can help to support the work that Rifco does in championing underrepresented artists from British South Asian backgrounds at the end of the film. We hope to see you all in a theatre near you very soon. But until then, please continue to support and enjoy our digital content from the comfort of your own homes or wherever it is that you might be. A memory process in three acts. Prologue. Lights up. Tableau one. Two men, Danny, 26, and Hari, 62, are sitting in the middle of a desecrated room. Glass, whiskey, rubbish strewn everywhere. And Charlie and Priya sit around them in various states of anguish and fury. Snap to tableau two. Danny's in the same position. The mobile phone, a Nokia, has ended up in the centre of the stage. The rest of the family is staring at it like a bomb about to explode. Snap to Tableau 1. Harry Bree breaks into life, slightly and gently walking up to Anjali. Too close. Shabash! Shabash! Snap to Tableau 2, and Charlie walks up to Harry slowly, tentatively. There's a struggle. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Ah. Fuck you. Shabbat. you. Fuck you. Shabash. Fuck you. <laughs> Lights up. There's a blank stage. And Danny's waiting outside the door. He's anxious. Very, very uncertain about whether to go in or not. He stalls himself as long as he can and eventually summons up the courage. And he's just about to knock on the door when Nick enters. I don't fucking believe it. Danny! Oh, wow, Nick. How are you? How, how you been? Hey, what's been going Good, on, man? man? How are things? No, no, it's been a real while. Yeah, not bad. No, Just uh, sorry. Uh, tickling along. You know? Oh, great. Uh, yeah. 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 You're not going in there, are you? What? Me? Oh, no, no. What was going to say? Can you imagine? Well, things can't be that bad. No, yeah? no. Not me. No. You waiting for someone? Yeah, just uh, my mate. Cool. Well, uh, let's grab a beer, yeah? Okay. What, now? No, no, not now. <laughs> uh, sometime, though. Sure, y yeah. I've actually got an appointment now. In there? Yeah. No, I think it's good to have some someone to talk to, you know? Right. Well, in the US, they're as common as GPs. <laughs> See you, mate. Blackout lights up. Tableau three. Danny and Angeli face each other. Priya, his youngest sister, tugs his arm forcefully. She's crying. Blackout lights up. Tableau four, a trash stage. Harry faces Danny and Danny takes a step forward. Harry punches him in the stomach. Danny keels over and Harry runs. Blackout. Lights up. Danny gets up. 
is standing outside his house and his mum, Anjali's, is on the doorstep. Danny's holding up a smashed bottle of vodka. Broken. Yeah, I dropped it. I'm sorry. <sighs> That's it. You're really going in with that. That's what happened. Don't shout at me. Is Priya in? No. Right. She's with friends. She doesn't have any friends. Are you staying? No fucking idea. <laughs> Please. I was talking to Camille earlier. She she hopped around for some. I I think I had texted her, or she had texted me and, and said, "Why don't you come round?" But I I couldn't, so she just came round, popped round for some tea. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, she was saying that they've been doing this study on, I, I think it, it was uh, hats, about how they love to to do that when they're angry. Do what? I just told you. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Mum, come on. Anyway, are you coming in? Where's Dad? When did you last see him? I don't know, do I? Have you spoken to him? He can do what he wants. Right, cool. See ya. Where are you going? I don't know. See ya, Ma. Danny! Please! Fuck! Blackout. Lights up. Danny's waiting. His phone rings and he answers it immediately. Hello? Hi, yeah, yeah, good. Just um in town. Where are Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm meeting uh, Nick. Where are No. No, I don't need money. It's fine. Yeah, I will be. Don't worry. Dad. Dad. Where are you? Right. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's fine. I was just um wondering. Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Can we talk when you get back? Yeah, no, it's, it's nothing urgent, I, I guess. Okay, all right, I'll see you soon. Okay, okay, Dad, love you. Okay, bye. Esme enters to perfectly bump into Danny as he turns and hangs up the phone. They are in a bar. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Hi. Hello. <laughs> you good? Oh, uh I'm brilliant. Yeah, really good. <laughs> well, well that, that's good. That's great, actually. I didn't know you were back. It was um, kind of impromptu. Lucky me. Lucky you. <laughs> I've really missed you. I'm sure you have. How is everything? Uh, so well. <laughs> Too well. Too well. <laughs> wow. I know, right? That is something. I got published. Fuck off. <laughs> Last week. Two poems and a commission for five more. Esme, that, that, that's fucking brilliant. We know. They hug and Danny kisses her neck. <laughs> and you? Uh, how is everything? Um, my parents split up and I don't know where my dad is. Whoa. Yeah, I'm, uh... I, I, I bet. Glad you're here, though. <sighs> How's your girlfriend? She's annoyed at me. Well, that seems unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I was MIA for a month. Uh-huh. Where were you? Couldn't tell you. Her threshold's only so high, even if I am going through shit. <sighs> Don't let her see this then. They kiss furiously. You're a fucking pig. No. She leaves. Esme, Esme, please, please, fuck, Esme, fuck, 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 Esme, fuck, man. 
Sorry. Sorry, mate. Can I get another? Um. Actually, uh, if you've got the bottle, then that's just fine. Yeah. Thank you. S sorry for the swearing. Yeah. Thanks. Danny sits some peace, some time, and he turns to you. Um, I think I'm going to need your help. Are you, um, is that cool? Yeah. All right, chill out. It's not Panta. I, I know uh, all that was, um, it was weird. Yeah. Uh, and that'll be the thing about this, I think. It'll be strange. There you go. Warning. Because uh, cause it's like a, a process, I think, that I... Uh, that I'm going through and I want to set the scene for you and I've been trying to figure out where to start I figure maybe 1976 might be the one this is a memory okay it's not exactly a memory it's like a recounted thing <laughs> Hannibal Lecter Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs he says that thing he's like um yeah, I mean, mm, Clarice, hello. <laughs> that, that was shit, I know, shit. Isn't it? Anyway, he says this thing, he, he says, memory is what I have instead of a view. And I think that applies here, maybe. I don't really have a view on this person anymore. I thought I did, but I don't think I do, and that's weird. So... This is my accounted memory. And there will be things missing and I'll get things wrong. So, I mean, maybe just leave now. I won't blame you, it's cool. Okay. So, uh, breathe. Can we, can we get some music please, all right? Cello starts. Really? Cello, okay, fine. So there'll be a lot of that. Um, I'll be there though, so don't. An assembly hall begins to form around him and Brother Bernard stands at the podium. 1976. That is where I thought we'd start. Missouri, India, not the States. The hills. Imagine that shot where the Hogwarts Express is crossing the bridge. It's like that, but sunny. The heat is oppressive. That's something people say, isn't it? But it is, probably. Uh, it's prize giving at a boarding school just after. There were hundreds of people, no space to move. And now it's just Harry, my dad. And brother Bernard, the headmaster in Bernard's office. The office is, uh, well, it's like a... Well, it's a theatre, so use your fucking imagination. So Danny steps into the scene, dons a turban, and is suddenly Harry Singh, 18. Scene one, Missouri, 1976. What in the bloody hell was that nonsense? Huh? Where? Harry. Okay, I can wait. I don't want to miss the celebration, so can I... Uh... Jinder Singh, you are not leaving the room until you give me an adequate explanation for your behaviour in that hall. The samosa only have last a couple of minutes and I want to grab one last one. Yeah, I'm sure one of the sisters will save you something. The Wainwright Prize. Is, uh, I'm not... It's not something that we just have to award each okay. year. Thank you, sir. You are the first recipient in I can't express to you four years, and I would expect that maybe you would be grateful. Donated by Rupinda Patel, the mother of Shani Patel, who was tragically killed in a motorbike accident when he took a corner too fast and fell off the mountain. And I've heard. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 
It bores you, huh? The tragic passing of... I'm not bored, sir. It is unheard of. Literally, no one has heard of such an action to refuse an award, to dare to stand on that stage in front of me and not even shake my hand, Beta. Don't call me Beta. You have so much potential, son. Your whole life is ahead of you. The records you broke, Beta. Don't call me Beta. Why do you keep calling me, sir? You're my headmaster, sir. It's a sign of respect only. Respect? Yes, sir. Arjinder, you have not called any member of this faculty, sir, in eight years. Forgive me if I find your tone disingenuous. Hari, sit down, please. Hari remains standing. We have not had a student like you in the history of our school. You've changed the game, Arjinder. You are special, really, truly. And destined for greatness only. <laughs> What's funny? Isn't that true? Am I saying anything wrong? No, I appreciate your words, Brother Bernard. Oh, thank you. Well, can I go now? I will remember you well. <laughs> I'm not dying. You know, it can be hard to move on. Huh? Students often find... Uh, this is your home. And we have understand, of course, that moving on to university is a daunting prospect. You've made real life for yourself here, but with the career prospects you have. Harry turns furiously back towards Bernard and takes a letter out of his jacket pocket and hands it to him. What's this? Now tell me. Bernard opens the letter and takes in its contents. Oh. Harry, I, this weekend... Uh, Explain to me again exactly how I'm a living legend, please. No, this is... The a, school has never seen anything like me. This really is easily explained. Destined for greatness, is that what you said? You can work through this. And you knew. Look, medical school is not so simple these days. Not one. Brother, not one interview. This An interview, is, even. It's nothing to do with you, Hari. Oh, then please explain what the hell it is to do with, brother, because I am at a loss, let me tell you. I know these tutors, these admission guys, they are crooks. I have been lied to for eight years, brother. Strung up to a pump full of lies like a factory cow pumped for milk. Well, we couldn't have seen this coming. But you knew. That letter is dated last week. They talk about their correspondence with you. You were going to present me with an award for exceptional contribution to school life, both academic and extracurricular, knowing that every medical school north of Mumbai was refusing to even interview me. And you're not even giving me an explanation. I'm owed something, brother. If if I am who you say I am, then I must be owed something. Bernard sits at his desk and motions to Hari to do the same, which he does. You know, Harjinder, we all have an image of ourselves in the world, huh? A version that we want to be. And try as we might to stay in the present, we even imagine the ways our life will play out, trying to control every moment. And every time, when we surrender to what the Almighty has planned for us, only then will we achieve happiness. Right. Good. I'm leaving now. Ah, grab the samosa. Fuck eh? the samosa! Harry storming out and Danny begins taking the turban off. Bernard stands. Wait! Bernard pulls out a letter from his desk and he begins to read. Dear Brother Bernard, we apologize unreservedly, of course, that we cannot offer Harjinder Singh an interview to study medicine with us. He doesn't give a reason. However, we trust the process and are offering a re-examination of his application for the fee attached. Excuse me? Two lakh rupees to be attached in cash and delivered special courier. If this is provided in good time, 
we will be more than happy to provide a second reading of Harjinder's excellent application. What the fuck is that? It is the way of the world, Harjinder. Uh, I'll report them. They called it an excellent application. This is illegal. Okay, try it. See what happens. Oh, why are you just taking this? I'm giving up trying to take control of this life anymore. Oh, stop with the hippie Buddha crap, brother. This is my life. And that is why I have been in contact with your father. I wrote to him in England. He is happy to pay. What? He is happy to pay the re-examination fee. The bribe. He's happy to pay the bribe. Yes, but ultimately it's up to you to accept. The control lies with you. He's offered the full amount. Happily. But uh... Harry steps forward and takes his turban off. He's Danny again. And he's in a bar and he's holding a shoddy bunch of lilies. And Sophie, she's watching him in shock. I thought they were your favourite. Dan. Which I've always thought is a bit odd because for ages I thought Dan. it was roses that you liked. I, I, I thought that it's a Where girls the fuck? like roses, right? But then uh, I remember see? that you said you I liked lilies, a... not he... roses. And I thought that's odd because but lilies like... are funeral flowers, oh, aren't they? What? Lilies. They're funeral flowers. Right, yeah. So that's weird, right? Danny. I'm sorry, Soph. Really, I'm... Sorry? What the fuck I'm are fucking you... fucking apologising right apologizing now. Apologising for? I can't do anything else, can I? I can't... That wasn't I what I was saying. Magic back the last month. I'm not asking you to do that. I just want... My mum and dad split. Oh, Dan. They split up, Soph. It's done. And I'm, I'm sorry that I haven't seen you. Stop fucking apologising. It's fine. I'm sorry. Lights out. Lights up. And Danny is facing Priya, his youngest sister. How are you holding up? Yep. What's been happening? Very little coursework. Oh, great. Uh, how's that going? Pretty shit. Language. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. How's mum? When are you coming back? Soon. Uh, you really don't care, do you, Danny? What? I know you don't. Where does that come from? We haven't seen you in weeks. I've been busy. I've got shit to do as well, you know. I, I don't just have to be I have to Whatever. Stop being a fucking brat, Priya. Okay, cool. Bye, Danny. You need to come and see Mum. Just do it. I have. I came a couple of days ago. You weren't in. Shouting and screaming at she her. She could barely stand. In the doorway isn't what she needs. I'm surprised she remembered it, to be honest. You're so high and mighty. It's pathetic. Oh, why am I being punished for having a life? Oh, and I don't. I don't have a life. That is not what I meant. Stop it. See you soon, Baji. I love you. Lights out, lights up. Danny is on an empty stage. He's waiting. And he turns to you. Yeah, I've got stuff on. You know, that, that wasn't... Uh, I don't normally talk to her like that. That's not... That's not our relationship. We actually really get on. She's, she's funny. So listen, does he accept it? M my dad, does he let his dad pay the bribe? I wouldn't be here if he had. <laughs> right and proper to a fault, my dad. Actually, uh, the next time that we see him is- um, Nick he enters. Danny boy! Oh, hey mate. You stalking me? <laughs> you sure you're not heading in? I'm honestly not, no. But then the only conclusion is that you're stalking me. I didn't realise you missed me that much. I think it's just a coincidence, really. 
Daddy boy. Mickey boy. Love that, yeah. Are you finding it helpful? What well, this? Yeah. See, I have been considering it. Well, can't hack it, Daddy boy. Obviously, hack it more than you. Dickhead. That's just, it's just a joke. How about that drink? Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Look, I've got an appointment now. You fancy waiting? Okay, cool. Yeah, I've got a book. Um, is there a waiting room in there? No. See you in an hour. Nick exits and Danny turns back to you. He's a good mate, actually. Uh, it's currently... I, I just don't really know which way is up. <laughs> uh, Harry, dad, moved to England. Went to uni somehow because they didn't accept his A levels at first and his English was appalling. And, uh, well, this is that bit Manchester, 1979. Danny dons a turban again and he's 24 now. And the viv and status we were told about in the first scene is there. <laughs> 